This is project number four for X203 of winter 2012. We are group B27, and our topic is strong induction. The definition of strong induction is to prove that P of n is true for all positive integers n, where P of n is a propositional function. We complete the following two steps. First, the basis step is to verify that the proposition P of 1 is true. Second, the inductive step, we show that the conditional statement P of 1 and P of 2 and everything through P of k implies P of k plus 1 is true for all positive integers k. The following are facts about strong induction. It is used when we cannot easily prove a result using mathematical induction. The basis step is the same as the proof of mathematical induction. The inductive step is different from the mathematical induction because it shows that if p of k is true for all positive integers not exceeding k, then p of k plus 1 is also true. You assume that p of j is true for j equals 1, 2, and all integers through k. It is also called the second principle of mathematical induction, or complete induction. Why is strong induction valid? The validity of strong induction can be shown from the well-ordering property. Mathematical induction, strong induction, and the well-ordering property are all equivalent principles, meaning that the validity of each can be proved from either of the other two. The proof using one of these two principles can be rewritten as a proof using either of the other two principles. Here is an example problem using strong induction. Let P of n be the statement that a postage of n cents can be formed using just 3 cent stamps and 5 cent stamps. The parts of this problem outline a strong induction, induction proof that P of n is true for n is greater than or equal to 8. First, we show that the statements P of 8 P of 9 and P of 10 are true, completing the basis step of the proof. Next, we show the inductive hypothesis of the proof, which is J cents of postage can be made with 3 cent and 5 cent stamps for 8 is less than or equal to J, which is less than or equal to K, assuming K is greater than or equal to 10. What does the inductive step need to prove? We need to prove that if the inductive hypothesis is true, then P of k plus 1 is true. Now we will explain why these steps show that this statement is true whenever n is greater than or equal to 8. Because the basis step and the inductive step are complete, 
we know that p of n is true whenever n is greater than or equal to 8. Here is another example. Which amounts of money can be formed using just $2 bills and $5 bills? First we show that P of n is to, uh, the statement that we can form n dollars using just $2 and $5 bills. We want to prove that P of n is true for all n is greater than or equal to 5. It is clear that $1 and $3 cannot be formed and that $2 and $4 can be formed. We will show that we can form all amounts except $1 and $3. For the basis step, note that 5 equals 5 and 6 equals 2 plus 2 plus 2. Next, we assume the inductive hypothesis that P of J is true for all J dollars with 5 is less than or equal to J, which is less than or equal to K, where K is an arbitrary integer greater than or equal to 6. Next, we want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. Because k minus 1 is greater than or equal to 5, we know that p of k minus 1 is true. That is, that we can form k minus 1 dollars. If we add another $2 bill, and we have formed k plus 1 dollars. Therefore, we have proved using strong induction that the answer is that we can form all amounts of money except $1 and $3.